What's up guys, it's Grant. So today I'm going to be doing a tier list for martial arts weapons. So before we start, I just wanted to say that this isn't going to be, you know, like street applications of martial arts weapons. It's actually just, you know, in competition, how I see them, like the difficulty of using them and things like that. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I apologize, I don't know a couple of the names of them. So, you know, uh, don't bash me in the comments for not knowing a couple of the names of these weapons. But that's basically what I'm going to be doing today. Now, as you guys can see on the screen here, I have this tier maker thing put up, and I know I'm a little bit late to this trend, but I thought it would be a cool idea to make a video like this, so that's what we're doing today. So we're gonna start at the very end of which I believe is the Tonfa, if that's pronounced correctly. And so as you guys can see here, it's just like these uh, short wooden sticks, I guess. I don't know if that's the proper way to describe it, with handles on the end and you grab the handles. Now, uh, I don't see this a lot in competition. I've probably only seen this maybe four times total. And actually one of the times was pretty cool because somebody uh, had them in their hands and they put the ends of them on the ground and they did a cartwheel with it. So that was kind of cool. Uh, but I really don't see these a lot. I only see them, like I said, maybe maybe four times. Uh, it's pretty cool. Most of the times you see them in like really traditional forms and things like that, where you just kind of move it out and back in and things like that. But like I said, that cartwheel thing was pretty cool. Um, now again, for those of you that use these weapons, if I give it a bad rating, <laughs> that doesn't mean anything at all. And actually, let me know what you guys think. You can give your own ratings and things like that. Let me know if you think I got it wrong, what you would have given each weapon and things like that. Let me know in the comment section down below. So I'm gonna start off with, I'm gonna give it a C for now. And as we go on, I can change things, um, you know, and move them around and things like that. But I'm gonna start off with a C. I kind of have to create a base at first and then kind of judge uh, where I put other things to see where I'm going to put the next couple uh, weapons. So now moving on to the sword. Now the sword is interesting because it's always, it's cool to watch in competition and things like that. Um, you're kind of limited as to what you can do with it, at least in my opinion, because you know, you only have the short handle and you can't be like, say for example with the bow staff, you can grab the bow staff anywhere along the weapon, whereas the sword you have to grab it in that specific area, which is going to be the same for a lot of these weapons, obviously. Um, but there's, there's a lot of cool tricks you can do with the sword, and as I said, it's exciting to watch the sword because, uh, you know, there's that uh, like danger aspect to it as well. So I'm going to put it above the Tonfas, but I'm deciding whether I want to put that in A or B. I think since we're at the start of it, I'm going to put it in B for now with the potential of moving it upwards, um, but we'll see. All right, so now moving on to the next one, I'm probably going to butcher this uh, pronunciation, but I believe it's called Eskrima, is that what it's called? Basically it's like two uh, shorter sticks, I believe not the length of a bow staff obviously, because the bow staff is you know pretty lengthy usually, uh, but it's two smaller ones and you have one in each hand I believe. Um, now I've only seen this honestly maybe maybe two times in competition, maybe even one, but I'm, I'm saying one or two times. Um, I think there's a decent amount you can do with it. Uh, it's tricky because in my opinion, I would just rather have a bow staff. And I think that in terms of difficulty and things looking cool, like doing like double bow is probably cooler than uh, Eskrima, if that's how it's pronounced. Uh, but it's still cool, obviously, but I think I'm going to have to, am I gonna put that in C? Or am I going to put that in D? I think I might leave it right there as for now. I might have it, you know, higher up and things like that if I saw it more. Um, and that's also the reason why in C I'm going to leave Tonfa higher than the Eskrima sticks. And again, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, just pretend I'm pronouncing it right the entire time. Uh, but I think I'm going to leave it as there. Solely for the reason that, you know, I saw one cool move with the Tonfa and I've seen it more. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Okay, so next we're moving on to the size. Now, as I was talking about with the sword, you have a very limited, you know, where you can actually grab the weapons, uh, but there are two of them. Now, I've seen the size maybe, I wanna say maximum 10 times, but probably somewhere around seven or eight, but I can't really remember, because I remember uh, before, like when I was a little bit younger, I would see them a little bit more at some of the more traditional tournaments I went to. So that being said, you know, I haven't really seen any, you know, like open style, um, you know, forms with size and things like that. So I can't really judge that. So that's going to make this one a little bit more tricky as well. But I think it could be really cool. I think this is kind of, you know, an underrated weapon in sport karate. I think uh, as long as it's not super heavy and you can maybe come up with some tricks and things like that with it, I think that's definitely out there. And I think that uh, that could be something we see in the future if people want to be creative with it and things like that. But now, as to where to put it, I don't know. Because like I said, I haven't really seen any cool tricks with it or anything like that. 
I, I just think it is cool. I think it looks cool. Um, so I, I know that's probably not the way I should be judging this, but I'm going to put it, you know what, I'll, I'll put it here. Okay, there we go. So I think I'm going to leave it as that for now. Um, there could be some changes in that C category, but I'll, I'll keep it like that for now. Uh, now the next one, I actually don't know the name for it. When I was competing, we always just called it like the paddle or the oar. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, uh, but essentially it literally looks like an oar. So essentially like if you take like part of a bow staff and then again, the, a paddle at the end of it. Uh, this one was pretty common for me to see at some tournaments, uh, mostly in more, more traditional settings as well. So there's not a lot of things to look at in terms of, uh, you know, like open forms and things like that. And again, just because, obviously you could probably grab it on the actual like paddle portion of it. And again, I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but I feel like you're kind of limited to things you can do because, you know, you could kind of compare the, the bottom portion of it, which is just like the handle portion of it to the bow staff. But then I, I feel like you can't do much with the other side. I've never used this at all. Uh, in fact, out of the ones that are already put in there, I've, I've only used the sword a little bit uh, and the size. I haven't used the, the other two that are already up on the tier list. So I've never actually used the paddle or the oar or whatever the proper name is for it as well. So I think for that sole reason, I'm going to put it at the bottom of C tier, I think. Those are all decently close as well. Um, and again, it's it's probably not a good reason for me having tonfos at the top of C just because I saw somebody do a cartwheel with them, but that's just how my thought process is working in this video. So let me know what you guys think. All right, so now moving on to the nunchucks. Now the nunchucks I've seen in both traditional and open settings, probably more open because uh, it's, you know, definitely used uh, a lot in open settings. You know, people are doing tricks with them uh, and things like that. Now it's, it's gonna be really tricky deciding between which one is higher between nunchucks and commas, but we'll get to that point. Uh, nunchucks, again, I think super, super cool. Uh, there's a good amount you can do with it. Uh, we'll talk about the amount you can do certain tricks with certain uh, different weapons. Closer to the end, you'll see what I'm talking about. But for nunchucks, it has to be at bare minimum, it has to be B. At bare minimum. I think, I think I'm gonna put it in A. But that's tricky because like I said, I'm doing this from the standpoint of, you know, which ones I'd like to see in competition the most, which ones are the most exciting and things like that. I, I think it does get the edge above the sword because again, the sword, you're kind of confined to certain things and you still are with nunchucks as well, but just not as much. Um, and I'm also thinking of the example of double nunchucks as well, not singular, like one set of nunchucks, like in one hand, both hands, uh, nunchucks. That's what I'm kind of thinking of for this right now. And I, also that brings me to the point, you know, people use double swords and things like that. That'll also increase it. But if we're, if we're thinking of it from that standpoint, I think I have to leave the nunchucks in A and the sword in B, but it's very, very close. Like those, like I would say the sword is at the very top of B. So it's, it's almost an A and I might even, again, I might change that once we're through all of these, I'll look at it again and see what I want to do. Um, but, but that's what I'll do for now. All right, so now, like I said, moving on to the commas, and this is gonna be difficult. Right away, I'm putting commas in A as well, because it's, like I said, it's so close to the nunchucks, and obviously, as you can see, there's two of them there. There's a lot of cool moves you can do with the commas. Um, it is, again, still somewhat restricted to what you can do. Uh, there's a lot of cool moves people have invented and things like that, like spinning it on their thumb and things like that. Um, I haven't really used the commas that much, um, maybe for a very, very small, small period, like literally just messing around with them myself and things like that, kind of the same as uh, I did with nunchucks. But see, see, this is a really tricky thing. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think, nunchucks or commas in terms of if you'd rather see, you know, a performance using one of them? Would you rather see nunchucks or would you rather see commas? I think I'm still gonna leave nunchucks on top because the weapon still moves. So it's, it's more difficult to use because it has the chain that connects the two, whereas the commas is all one singular piece. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now. So for A, I'll have nunchucks above commas. And then again, I'll keep the sword in B at least for now. So now moving on again, I don't know if there's a proper name, but as you guys can hopefully see on the screen, hopefully the picture is large enough. It's essentially a rope with uh, a knife or a blade on the end, I believe. Now, I don't know if this picture is specifically for, because uh, I know there's one that, uh, that is used in more like Kung Fu style. Uh, and there's also one that's used in 
a different kind of martial art. I forget what the name of it is, but I'm just kind of going to be, you know, lumping them together because they look kind of similar. Uh, now, you know, the performances and things like that might be different, but I'm just going to relate to what, again, I've seen the most. Uh, so for this, I think it's cool. A lot of people, you know, they'll like swing it to their sides and stuff, and it's entertaining to watch because, um, again, it looks cool. It's not very frequent. I've seen this maybe, maybe 10 to 15 times. That might be generous, but I'll just say 10 to 15 times. Uh, it's super cool. Um, maybe not the best one to use in terms of like efficiency and I could be completely off with that so you know don't hate me for saying that if you if you like this weapon you know it's completely fine they're all great um, but for some reason I just think like oh if you're if you're spinning it you miss the first time and they get the rope you can't really do much I don't know if that's right to think at all because again I have zero experience with this but for some reason that just comes to my head um, ah, see and and for that reason I want to put it in D but I'm also trying to think of how it compares with the other C's. I'd rather... Hmm, that's... You know what? I'm gonna put it in C. I... Should I put it there? You know what? I think I'm gonna leave it there for now. I think. Again, like I said before, very tricky. This whole C category is very tricky, uh, but I th I think I'll put it around that. If not, I'm I'm super close. I'm torn between it, so it's it's got to be at least somewhat close to what I actually uh, I'm trying to think here. Okay, I'll I'll leave it at that for now. Let me know what you guys think about that whole category as well. So now finally, <laughs> this might be a biased answer, but now finally moving on to the bow staff, and I guess you could include double bow staff and things like that. Personally, I'd rather watch single bow. Um, but again, I, I did this with nunchucks and sword and things like that, so we'll just put it together in a category, single or double bow, just bow staff in general. So, as you guys can probably tell, that's going in S. <laughs> so, again, this is probably at least a little bit biased, but I think that the bow staff is the weapon that you can do the most with. So, um, you know, in terms of strikes, in terms of different techniques in terms of like uh, spins, rotations, um, especially in terms of, you know, actual like hard tricks and things like that. It's basically endless with the bow staff or at least close to it. And the amount of things you can do, at least in my opinion, is way more with the bow staff than any other one. Um, now again, I'm trying to think, think of things that don't really seem biased because that's the one that I like the most and the only one again that I use right now. But you've got to admit, you can probably do the most with the bow staff. There's the most opportunity to invent new things. You can there's there's the most things to learn in general, in my opinion. And if you guys you know disagree with that, let me know. Let me know your opinion, uh, or let me know which one you think out of all of these is the most difficult to use, or you can do the most with. Let me know what you guys think. But in my opinion, I think it's going to be the bow staff, and that's why I put it up to S tier. Um, now, Although I said nunchucks and commas are very good and stuff, I don't think they make it to S tier. I think that the bow staff is just that much higher above the others. Although, as I said, all of these are very good, you know, especially, like I said, the ones in A, like nunchucks and commas, very exciting to watch and things like that. But I just think that the bow staff is kind of like on a league of its own, or in a league of its own, if that makes sense. Uh, again, trying not to be biased, even though it, it is going to be biased, but uh, but I think most of you guys would probably agree with me, even those of you that do multiple weapons and things like that. I think you'd probably agree that, uh, you know, the bow staff, there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, so let me go over this quick. Okay, so at the top, we've got the bow staff. I'm 100% with that one. A, we have nunchucks and commas. And I think I think now I'm, I'm set in stone with nunchucks being above the commas. Still very, very close, but I think I'll leave it at that. B, the sword, uh, I, think, I think I will leave it there. I think I will leave it there because Again, it's super exciting and things like that, and you kind of get that dangerous aspect, but you are fairly limited, you know, to what you can do. I'd say probably more than fairly, just because of, uh, you know, you can't do much with a short, uh, you know, space or a short amount of room that you can actually have your hands on the weapon. So I'll leave that at B for now. Okay, so C, we've got the Tonfas at the top. Again, kind of, kind of just because I saw somebody do a cartwheel with Tonfas, but it was cool. Maybe there's a video on the internet of that. I don't know. And then we've got the size. Then we've got uh, Eskrima, I believe. Is that how you pronounce it? 
Uh, then we have the rope with the weapon on the end, and then finally the paddle or the oar. I think I'm going to stick with that for now. Again, a couple of those maybe could be moved around, things like that, and see in my opinion. But I think that's that's as close as we'll probably get, uh, unless I'm sitting here for hours on end. So I think that this is the tier list, in my opinion, for uh, you know the competition weapons and things like that, difficulty, uh, how it looks in a performance and things like that. Again, as I said earlier in the video, let me know what you guys think. What would you have at the top? What would you have at the bottom? Um, you know, would you have commas above nunchucks? Would you have this, that? Where would you put the sword? Things like that. Do you agree with me that the bow staff should be at the top? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, but that's going to be it for the video, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.